I don't know how to, it feels to me that every bomb we put in a seat at Native Earth, we do by talking to that person on the phone. One of my staff members talks to someone on the phone or sells a group or whatever, and that's how we get an audience in. But the public is not interested in what we have to say. They're interested if, if my big thing right now is they're interested if it's bad news. You know, the Caledonia thing, there was a picture in the paper a few weeks ago that, that was uh, the, the confrontation that someone was trying to create out there, and it's a, a settler, a non-native man, standing there with a sign that says, um, get a job, you filthy Indians, facing off with a cop. I bought the picture because I really wanted to own it, because it feels to me like that's why we keep doing this, mm -hmm. because I have to find a way to keep doing this. Jeez, I sound angry. I know. We were saying in the van, we're going to have to cheer up before Monday. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're on this paddle. Because where we were, was, it was an odd configuration. Because here's me and Yvette. Yvette's driving. I'm in the, the back passenger seat. And I'm just like, oh, God, oh no. man, can't do this anymore. <laughs> oh, shattered. It's just, it's too hard. Why? Why? And the question we kept, we were asking, I, I think later on figured out it's not really the right question of, why are we doing this? Because as we were sort of spewing this stuff, uh, nobody cares. What do they care about? Oh, I don't know what they care about. Well, when I was in LA, they sure cared about flags of our fathers. They care if they can rent a darkie to do war propaganda, then they oh, care. Ouch. <laughs> are we angry? Oh, <laughs> you win. <laughs> but, but how is it that Marie Clements is not supported to do that very important work that she does. How is it that Floyd Fable is not supported to do that very important work that he does? How is it that Native Earth is not? And we know why. We know why. And uh, one of the young actors, we had three very young, fresh actors in the van who were like listening to this like, oh, no. this is not what I want to hear. <laughs> And one of them finally said in a, a very tentative voice, well, I'm going to Whitefish Bay next week because all the young men up there are killing themselves. And it's like, yeah, we, we know why we do it. We know why we do it. In the middle of the Julius Caesar workshop, I looked out and I saw two faces that I had heard kind of on, on the side of my ear that, Oh, they're bringing two people from Mexico to see the, the, the afternoon showing, and uh, it's okay because Monique speaks Spanish. And I just thought, oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> and then I looked out there and I said, oh, no, these are two indigenous people from I'm not sure where, but I know they have no idea what I'm saying. As I'm out there doing the stars in the firmament speech, and then I see these faces, and it's like, okay. Now I know why we're here. And it turns out they were on a tour. They're, um, they are part of the group of people in Oaxaca right now, in Oaxaca City. People don't know this here. There's a state of war in Oaxaca City. It's under siege. Planes are not going in or out of Oaxaca City. There are thousands and thousands of state police of military police, of army, of the Federal Bureau of Investigation of Mexico, and the indigenous people are calling for everyone to come down from the mountains and reinforce the barricades. People are being murdered left, right, and center. And these two people were sitting in the audience of a Native Earth workshop watching us struggle through, why are we doing Julius Caesar? <laughs> so it was really kind of a, okay, we know the why. It kind of seems, you know, as Bet was saying, it's like, how do we keep doing that which is so vital? We know inside in our guts this is vital. We know inside that this can be such an important part of this. You, know, you get tired of the word healing, but I also know that that's, that's the place that I work from. That's why I do the work. If something's really like that pebble in my shoe, I say, what is that? That's what I go in and dig around in. What, what I most need to heal in myself, what I most need to heal 
in my in my family and community nation and how that goes out and how that power of impacting another person on a level of touching the heart of hitting the ear of of showing what it looks like from the inside can change us on on a really deep cellular or molecular level that that's a, that's an energetic loop that we make and that is say the what we do when we create the, the magic of theater, but it's also the center of any kind of ceremonial healing and ritual. We know why we do it. What we don't know is how, we, how do we go on? Because <laughs> it also takes its, um, it takes its toll, physically, politically, emotionally, and If I had this conversation with my son, so this is the next generation, and he was talking about this cusp that we're on. He's a filmmaker. He had two films in Imaginative last week. And uh, this cusp that we're on, and he, he said something interesting. He said, in the 20th century, the only identity possible for Native peoples and the only identity possible for Native artists to present was the identity of victim because it was the only experience of the 20th century. So now we're on this place where we have to, we have to make that leap. And I think that's what interests me the most about what work I do from now on because I'm tired of my own victim stories. <laughs> And I don't want to tell them that way anymore. And at the same time, one of the things you're saying in the van is, well, but we still are at a place where either that's all that they want to hear, or we're still in a place where it's not known. You know? I don't know how many cab drivers I've had ask me, so how come every Indian I see in the street, how come they're always drunk on Bathurst and Queen? And it's like, how, how long do you have to go back to keep explaining the, the basic? But I'm very interested in what, what would happen, and I think I've been saying this for a long time, what would happen to our, to our art, to our theater, if we didn't always have to be in reaction to oppression, genocide, What would we be creating then? And what, who and what would we draw on? So that was the trip to Guelph. <laughs> <laughs> Some things uh, I draw on is uh, doing stuff specifically in the language, and I think that that's allowed me to uh, sort of lift off where uh, both my parents you know, their experiences could be, or my grandmothers, or my grandfathers, or, because in that fluency, it, it allows me right now for something more to aspire to before I leave. And one thing I want to leave this world is being a grandmother and being fluent. And uh, although I have a profound understanding, it's fluency that really is that next little hurdle. And um, because everything's in there for me that is creative, and that is artistic, and that is so much about uh, a plot or or anything so so um, you know the color and and all those things are in there so now when I'm here in in the big city I'm um, when I was able to get involved with CIT for me it was like the microcosm of the Bajimajig and being back home because you have all these young people coming here from all over Canada and winding up here and some of them don't know Toronto well, and some of them are old hats. And, but, uh, but it is a, a culture shock if you move here from, say, Saskatchewan or something. And, um, and I just felt being involved with them reminded me of when you know, young people new to this um, really have uh, a way to uh, 